everybody, this is me, Edward Jones, back with a new video. This is a, another video for the uh, for the series Tools for Urban Preppers, and today I'll be covering uh, lubricants and rust preventives. Uh, right now I'm in the kitchen because uh, to my left, you see this, the pressure cooker is, uh, is going right now, and I just want to be here to monitor the pressure, so I figured I'd just move the video into, uh, move the video into, into the kitchen. The pressure is good. I'm doing meats. I gotta make sure the I gotta make sure the pressure stays around uh, 10 or 11 psi. Trying to heat up a bit. I got an electric range, so it's hard to. You know, it's a bit, a bit more difficult to adjust it quickly. So I just gotta be patient. But today, this video will be on you know different types of oils, uh, solvents, and greases that are good to have around the house. Um, you know, for the, I believe it's good to have. If you live in an urban environment, because there are times when you know key gets stuck in your door, uh, the windows uh, tracks will get stuck. Um, certain parts, uh, certain parts around the house will get rusty. You need to, you need um, something effective to clean them. Uh, if you live in a city and you know you, let's say you have firearms, you want to make sure that they're you know they're, they're protected against the elements, uh, so that they work so that they're working properly, uh, especially when, during a time of emergency. Well, I'm gonna start from the left. Uh, this is some uh, 3-in-1 oil. This is a pre. This is like the light duty work. Uh, I use it for lubricating my clippers when I cut my hair, um, and I've used it for bike chains in the past, you know, loosening locks, st stuff, uh, loosening stuck hinges in the doors, and it works pretty well. Um, here's some more purpose-built uh, lubricant. This is a Hoppy's number nine lubricating oil, and it says, uh, if you read that, it says high viscosity and penetration uh, for firearms, fishing reels, and all mechanisms. I've actually used this on my clippers as well, and it, it worked. I'm, like, I was satisfied with the way it worked. Um, I, I, anytime, I, anytime I'm done shooting, um, I, uh, I'll clean my guns and I use hoppies on parts like firing pins, firing pin springs, uh, recoil springs. Uh, my 1911, I use it on the uh, barrel uh, lug, the, the link underneath the barrel, um, and it's pretty. It's a pretty good oil to have. Now, here's one that uh, I use. At, I use it at my job a lot. Uh, working a bike, sh I work in a bicycle shop, and it's just called Triflow, and it penetrates, protects, and it says formulated with PTFE. And I've seen a previous video many years ago. Um, it was a 1911 t uh, disassembly video where you know, the guy took apart his gun and cleaned it, and he mentioned this, and it's uh, the PTFE is actually Teflon, so it has the instructions back here, shake well before using. Um, it's Teflon, so it puts a slippery coating on whatever part it's on, and it's for bike chains. If you live in the city, you know it's good to have that in your pack. Uh, to be able to lubricate your ch uh, lubricate and, you know, and clean your chain when it gets you know you're on the go and it gets kind of grimy. It's also good for uh, it's good for guns. Uh, it's, it's a bit more runnier. It's a bit it's a bit more thinned out, but it leaves a good coating on whatever parts it, uh, it, it 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 touches. Now for uh, some solvents, we have WD-40. Uh, we all know about we all you know have this in our garage or in our toolbox. I would hope so. Um, you know, if you're a small-time you know, mechanic or you know professional, you at least have a can of WD-40 lying around. And of course, it's always good for um, you know it drives out moisture. So if you have if you have electronics that have gotten wet, or you have any engine parts, like I remember the, I remember reading uh, an uh, some ads on this where it talked about using on um, circuit breakers, but it may have been the it may have been the um, the older uh, maybe in the older ingredients, the older formula. I remember the, the older formula was actually flammable. This this isn't uh, very much flammable as it as it was before. Uh, it says you can use it on spark plugs, which I've used it before. Uh, nuts, bolts, valves, locks. You know, it protects tools, firearms, and sporting equipment. And it's a lubricant as well. Uh, but, and it's a it's a penetrant, but it is a is not it is light duty. Now for a little more heavier duty stuff. Uh, I recommend PB Blaster. This is a bit more expensive. I think this can was about 
799 at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I still got a bunch in there, but this will really, you know, really cut through anything that's stuck. Um, I've used this on a friend's dad's shotgun I worked on at Ithaca 37 uh, a couple years back. And I used PB Blaster, and it worked real well. I sprayed on the finish, you know, let the let the surface of the let the surface metal soak it up, and the rust, you know, ca rust came off fairly easy, fairly easier than if I would use WD-40. Now both are good to use for coating parts. Uh, I used WD-40 in the past when I sharpened axes. Uh, I would uh, spray it on after I got all the rust off, and just leave it in a bucket, not a bucket full of WD-40, but just spray it on, leaving the leaving an empty bucket for a week. And then I guess it was the humidity or the you know, the heat outside kind of baked it into the surface, allowed it to stick. I remember I picked up the axe, uh, the head just had like the sheen on it, and so it had a protective coating. PB Blaster would do the same thing. Um, it's very tough stuff. You know, if you have if you have like engine head bolts or you have you know hinge bolts that are you know, stuck stuck on you know real bad. PB Blaster is a, good, is a good thing to use. Also, I heard something that's better than PB Blaster is Croil, and I've seen Croil used for uh, die and tap sets. So Croil is also this. I guess uh, I haven't tried Croil. I gotta, you know, I'm gonna add that to my toolbox someday. But I believe it's, you know, I believe it's, you know, it's advertised as being pretty good stuff. I read pretty positive things about Croil on uh, different different gun forms. Uh, now this Tetra gun grease. Uh, I use this primarily on my 1911 uh, on the rails, the slide rails, and on the rails in the frame. And this is, grease is good for when you want whatever you're lubricating to have constant lubrication over time. Because what happens is all these other lubricants, well, more so these, will they'll lubricate but they'll run, um, especially when the heat gets, especially whenever it's is applied to the heat gets too hot. And so what happens is it breaks, it you know, it it, it loosens up and it breaks down and it, it runs off whatever part it's on because of the heat. Um, w forty and PB Blaster, it can withstand the heat. Uh, but if you need, but but for sliding parts, you know, it's recommended to have some good grease. Uh, white lithium grease is good is good to have. Uh, it's good to use for you know for tracks on doors and slide actions on shotguns and rifles, lever actions. Because uh, it's because grease stays in place, and it's also high temperature resistant. So if you have something that's you know like like kind of like axle bearings and eat, you know it's going to it's going to experience high temperatures, then you want to have something that you know will lubricate it and stay you know stay, keep it in place. I seen a I watched a documentary on the History Channel where it talked about you know you know the importance of grease. I know that the Egyptians they would use uh, tallow, uh, animal fat to grease the bearings. And hubs on their chariots, and I know that uh, I was also on that same program. I talked about carrier uh, aircraft carriers, you know, needing you know uh, barrels and barrels of grease um, for just you know for, for you know for day to day maintenance. So grease, you know, lubricants are very important. Protecting uh, rust preventives are very important to keep your tools protected against the elements because you don't want you know you don't want buttons or guns, uh, knives. Anything like that rusting over during a time of an emergency, and even though you know, and it may seem you know, may it seem like you would need these kind of stuffs in the urban environment, but trust me, time. You know, I live in the city. I live in, I live in two cities um, in my life. Uh, I'm, I'm from New York City, and I live here in Columbia, South Carolina. And you know, city life doesn't change the fact that things rust. You know, things get stuck. Things uh, you know need need things need to be broken through in order for it to slide in and out or um, for it to function properly, so it's good to have these, uh, you know, similar uh, chemicals in your toolbox to help to aid you during an emergency, or just when times, you know, just just to make things a little bit more convenient for you. But that's my video. Uh, I want to enjoy my steak, which I was cooking at the same time this pressure cooking was was operating. I'm Edward Jones, and thank you for watching my video.